this was really anticipated, you know, coveted, you know, journalists begging for an invite. People wanted to be there. They did. They went to, I think it was Warner Brothers Studio. They did this ad. This was not just a average tech event. This was a, this was a, uh, this was a, you know, Hollywood moment. And Elon Musk is so controversial. I mean, people right now either kind of love him or hate him. Yeah. Um, I guess this is just reflective of who I am. I'm somewhere in between. I find him really fascinating. I'm not sure. Um, you know, my biggest. So here's here's my TLDR. This wasn't just a, a robo taxi event. This was a kind of a paint the future event. Um, there are Waymo's and Ubers, and there's a lot of self driving stuff out there. The difference of what I think Musk is showing with a cyber car is that these things evolve from being cars that look like cars as we know them with seats, steering wheels, gears, buttons, controls, to literally moving um, environments for people to function. You know, he talks about going to sleep and waking up at your destination, but the seats don't look like cars. You know, you got these robo vans, they're like, you know, yachts, you're inside them, they got working spaces, you're just, it's like being on a train. Um, and so these cars, unlike the Waymos with all the LIDAR all over them and all the gears and the vision and the cameras and the si sensors, they look just like ordinary vehicles, but they're actually becoming designed for ergonomically for people to be able to function while they are mobile. So it's a very different future that he's painting. And I thought that was interesting. And of course, Pat, these humanoid robots, like, I don't know if you've watched some of these videos, like when people are like, oh, this was a nothing burger. It was a, like... This guy's standing. I, I watched the video. This guy was standing in the middle of the place, just having a convo with this humanoid robot. And again, you know, goes back to the Amazon product VAPR. Is this vapor? Is it real? Is it programmed? Is, is it how far along is this? But we know what large language models are doing. This wouldn't be surprising to be able to insert a very logical, conversational chat bot inside of a physical. But the idea that this thing can go collect packages for you, bring you beverages. I mean, can you see a future where like, every home has a robot. I mean, I, I totally could see this is like Jetson era stuff. So yeah. when, when people kind of call it nothing, I, I get a little bit like, are people too small minded? Do they not see the size of the TAM? I think Jensen came out and said, more chips. <laughs> he said, of course, this is great, more chips. Um, all these devices will need more silicon content. So that's always great. But you know, we're moving really fast and we're at the point now where we're starting to be able to realistically experience future mobility the future of robotics and in and, and the consumerization of all this. I will say, final thought, because I could talk about this for a while, is that Musk, my biggest beef with him is that his timelines are never right. They're not even close to right. We were supposed to have done a FSD drive, what, six, seven years ago now? It was it was like eight, 2018. I mean, it was sometime at the end of the last decade that we were supposed to be doing a cross-country a driverless experience. And here we are going into 25 and we're still not really there at scale. We are seeing FSD yeah. in regions and markets. So all the things he says always kind of have to be weighed against a little bit of a grain of salt is I, I think he'll do everything he says. He's going to put rockets out there. He's he's going to put links in people's brains and he's helping people recover from brain trauma. I mean, he's doing amazing things. I get really amazing, amazing things. And when people you know, pick on him, I, you know, I'm, it's like, I understand why he doesn't care because you're not even, you don't even deserve to say his name, most of us, including me. But the, the, the net is, is just, if you're an investor, when is this real? When does this become TAM? When does this become dollars? And when does this make the stock worth more? Because right now we're still just talking about model Ys and model threes and shipment volumes. We're not really looking at how much this could add. And I think that's what people want to see more of. Yeah, you did a great job covering this topic, Dan. And, you know, I, what we're seeing here is a, a glimpse of the future and not some unattainable type of thing. You know, Musk does stuff that people say can't be done, like reusable rockets by a startup, right? And not a huge government contractor. You know, we've seen Boeing basically embarrass itself trying to replicate what test what um, spacex has already done um and you know when he came when musk invented uh tesla people saying you know there's nobody ha nobody has been able to create a new car company in 50 years because of the scale involved in manufacturing and quality control and servicing 
And he did it. You know, he had to sleep in the factory. He had to, I mean, by the way, read Musk's biography. It's amazing uh, how they did this. Yeah, is it Isaacson one? Yeah, he was teetering on bankruptcy multiple times. Uh, he put all his investment uh, that he made in 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 Zip2 uh, and PayPal right into, he rolled everything in here. I mean, the guy sells his houses and not not financially, it's just about, it takes too much brain space that he wants to be uh, putting in here. So yeah, he does not hit his schedules. Uh, I believe that he puts out schedules to put pressure on his engineering team. Uh, if you read his methodology of, of how he thinks, <laughs> in his brain, he does believe that it's, a, that, that, that it's attainable and he's waiting for somebody to give him a credible reason to tell him no. Had he accepted what all his engineers told him all the time, uh, SpaceX wouldn't be around. Tesla uh, would not be around. And, you know, his leadership style, too, is when he makes the call, he will take responsibility if something screws up. I mean, there was a, a major uh, SpaceX uh, splash and crash uh, that, you know, he gave the thumbs up. And there was a tile or something that was off and it got cooked. You know, heck, he went, he changed materials to, to freaking stainless steel uh, when that hadn't been uh, done before for different uh, thermal uh, reasons. So, yeah, he's a great inventor of our time. Uh, he's, he's, he's imperfect, uh, like, uh, like, all, like all humans. And what's interesting, if you read uh, biographies of like Thomas Edison, uh, the Gettys, um, you know, the Spruce Goose, uh, stuff like that. Uh, these inventors are kind of uh, bonkers. Uh, it, some people would characterize them. And I mean, my gosh, look at look at Palantir. Um, yeah. Look at An Anderil, defense contractor, right? Uh, creating uh, defense uh, weaponry that are, you know, one one hundredth the cost with 10x lethality. I mean, these are the inventors of, of our time and they are perfect in their imperfection. 